Hi, my name is Steve McKay. I'm doing a um, presentation on advanced TCP IP. Um, I'm just using some of the existing slides on data communications, but I just want to really want to look at the advanced issues with TCP IP. Um, obviously, again, trying to do this in a space of um, 10 minutes, you will get the full set of slides, so away you go, and a little write-up. But really just trying to look at some of the issues here. Um, we do these presentations every week or so um, when I can get someone motivated to run a quick presentation. It can be a little bit tiring at times, but um, we're just trying to obviously provide you some useful information without boring the socks off you. Um, and obviously I'm doing this one at the end of 2014, so I hope 2015 is a fantastic year for everyone. And thank you very much for tuning in. So really, just uh, quickly a recap. Um, obviously, TCPIP is the building block for all, um, for all uh, industrial and um, control systems. I must say, I was always a bit puzzled by um, how TCPIP made it, but it's certainly one of the winning features which, um, which gets around the irritating proprietary systems you've had in the past is that it's open, it's open and accessible, and um, it's um, pretty bulletproof most of the time. It has a few technical issues, I guess, with uh, speed and um, perhaps a bit of complexity, but um, it's a beautifully designed system and um, served us well. So I really just want to look at the advanced issues here with TCP IP. Um, really, uh, the Issues here are really just to briefly mention hardware and cabling, TCPIP, utilities, and packet analysis. So I just want to look at packet analysis in perhaps a little bit more detail. So quick introduction. Uh, as I said, the slides will give you more background. Here's a typical um, control system plant down at the field level where you don't really see TCPIP at this stage, although I reckon in the future you probably will see more of it. But at the moment you see field bus and device net and for obvious reasons, um, field bus, for example, in the intrinsically safe area, you probably need a um, foundation field bus solution or a property bus PA solution with RS-485. You can't really synergies into those areas. And then the idea is that the cell level, the next level up, you have industrial ethane with TCPIP, and then obviously at the um, control level, also TCPIP. So I really just want to look at the TCPIP issues with troubleshooting. So really, obviously, tools of trade or cable tester, utilities, and then Wireshark to actually have a look at what's going on. That's where your skills really can be developed. So obviously, as far as the hardware is concerned, check the cable, correct wire type, switch lights, are they operating properly? Sometimes very difficult. I had a problem recently with um, with a brewery and uh, we couldn't configure a switch and I mean it is all wired up correctly but a little subtle problem which is not on that list there is um, the power supply uh, the power to the switch had actually um, dropped below the sort of required um, level I think it was a, I think it was an industrial switch so it required 24 volts but in fact the voltage had sagged to 20 volts so what is happening is the switch is still operating but as soon as you uh, had a new device connected onto the switch, it wouldn't um, uh, recognize it. So subtle problems like that, and only when you reset the switch would the problem go away, because then will update it. But um, what we eventually found out was that the power voltage levels were low, and that would so have been picked up there. It comes with experience. As you all know, a rather painful way of learning, but a very memorable way of learning, I can tell you. So, other thing is utilities, which is not I'm not going to worry too much about here, but obviously ping, which I'll give you a free book. Anyone can guess what ping stands for? Anyone out there? Stands for get get this packet internetwork groper. Someone with a sense of humour or a sexual pervert put that together. Ping up. This resolution protocol, NetStat, these are all very useful for actually um, getting a bit of a, a view of what's happening in the network, where you don't really need to um, 
revenue protocol analysis. So that's really the nitty gritty basic stuff. These, by the way, you don't just you put these in your in your um, DOS window, terminal window, to actually look at what's going on. But you need to put switches in. So, for example, ping. You're putting ping, and then the IP address one nine two one six eight dot zero dot three hyphen T. If you want to continue pinging and seeing if there's any delays, it's quite useful that. And um, shows a few examples of pinging stuff. RP gives you the hardware and IP address mapping, which is kind of useful. But these are just useful just to get a quick and dirty feeling for what's going on right in the beginning. IP config trace it is quite useful when you're looking at router networks, and um, it's quite fascinating to see which way your packets go. So that actually is like a ping to all the routers in the network. But the one which is of most interesting is packet analysis. And um, obviously, this is a rather short presentation, but TCPIP is neatly uh, described here. So really what you've got is the data link layer. You have Ethernet. The Ethernet uh, structure is over there. And then the IP protocol fits into the network layer. TCP fits in over here. TCP and IP over here. So the TCP IP protocol is slightly simplified version of the OSI model, which gives you a pretty good description. And at the application layer, we have things such as HTTP, FTP. And uh, so the idea is that you've got, should we say, a uh, protocol for every layer, every potential issue that you've got to cover. So the application layer. And then in the uh, field bus world, you actually have another layer above there called the user layer, what we used to use the user layer, which is really sort of, um, where you take this information, do something with it, create function blocks and stuff like that in the field bus. Let's not go into that. So here's the packet structure. This is what you pick up with your free version of the protocol analyzer, Wireshark. This is a really good package. Um, and this is what gets really interesting. So what you do now is you're looking at the layers. And the layers that you're looking at are, um, Go back are really the IP protocol and the TCP and the application layer. You do see the Ethernet frame as well, um, but it's of less interest to you. I mean, the MAC address is interesting, but really it's the upper layers that become interesting. So, for example, uh, Modbus will be fitted in over there, Modbus and TCP. So, that becomes very really interesting to actually identify what's going on there. So, here's a particular example of a frame. Uh, and this is where things get really interesting. You obviously look at the uh, source IP address. This is the IP layer. layer. Look at the address. Um, look at the protocol type. I'll tell you what sort of protocol it is. Uh, this is just a ping, by the way, it's ICMP. Uh, and then uh, look at the next layer above, which is the um, Internet Connection Protocol thing. And over here, you find lots of uh, useful information. You, you find TCP and um, normally in there, but this is a very simple um, ping message. And over here, you've got your Ethernet frame, which is really not too much interest to us here. Apart from the fact you get your um, MAC address, your 48 bit address, source and destination address, that is very important. So, really, that is where things get really interesting uh, from an advanced point of view, is when you start dissecting the actual protocol. And that will be covered in the supporting materials sent through to you in this um, presentation. So any questions, please drop them through to me. I'll be delighted to answer them. Uh, or if I don't know, I'll speak to one of our gurus who's been working in this area for the last 15 years. Although I would say any guru still has to learn uh, every day. That's all for me, Steve McKay from Engineering Institute of Technology. Thanks very much for tuning in. And um, over to you.